In the first half of 2010, a unique partnership was forged between graziers and researchers to trial the latest weapon in the war on Parkinsonia. Dr Vic Galea heads up the dieback research at the University of Queensland. Dieback in, in woody plants is quite an interesting phenomenon. We actually find dieback occurring in a very wide range of trees. Almost every tree has a dieback syndrome associated with it. He reflects on an early method of inoculating trees with the fungus. The first time uh, it was rolling cigarettes using tally-ho papers, a handful of mouldy grain twisted into a cigarette. We started then sticking those into trees, so drilling holes in trees, sticking these cigarettes full of mouldy grain in. Peter Spence from Desert Channels Queensland attended the recent dieback field days around western Queensland. From south of Prairie at Home Lee and then Rail View, there were really good results there and in some of the trial patches you know, there was a good kill, really good kill. Vic and the boys were quite excited about that. One really exciting thing though was looking at another trial site this morning where we found in one whole treatment all the trees had died and we found a different set of symptoms in every one of the different treatments uh, that uh, had been set up. Dead Parkinsonia trees are what most people have been looking for, but landholders attending the field days saw some unexpected results. In one particular trial, um, the uh, base of the plants showed a, a girdling effect where they lost all their bark and that's a symptom we've never seen before in Parkinsonia dieback. The lack of obvious tree decline could lead landholders to miss significant results at their sites. Particularly with the, the damage to the base of the trees, they were so busy assessing the crown of the plant, which is what we normally do, that they didn't even look at the bases and, and they all said, wow, we need to go back and have another look at our trials, we think we've missed something. Desert Channels Queensland has worked with landholders over the last eight years, controlling weeds in the Lake Eyre Basin. Peter Spence knows the challenges. Two years ago, or three years ago, Desert Channels surveyed the river, the Thompson up to Mudderbar, flew over in helicopter and spotted all the trees, and there's been a huge, since then with the wet season, there's been a huge increase in numbers. Because we all know Thompson goes in the Cooper Creek, which runs into the Lake Eyre, so... Um, yeah, the long-term problem is if we don't get on top of this problem, we'll have, um, we'll have Parkinsonia all the way down the Lake Eyre. Current chemical control methods are labour-intensive, but vital for the protection of the river systems. Um, the Thompson comes around to the left and goes up the Mudderbar, and this is the intake of Aramac Creek. Um, this light colour area in here is the project we've just finished with the Longridge Regional Council. As you can see, there's a, a broad area where the two rivers meet and um, that's where we've done our surrounded hours. The trials have a way to go before the full potential of the fungus is known. Right, we've had some varying results from site to site. Um, some of the trial sites that we looked at did not seem to show any effect from dieback. Um, however, we're hopeful that something will happen probably in the next um, six months or so. Vic Galea is keen to see more monitoring results from landholders so the research team can assess the results from the 49 trials around Queensland. If anyone out there has a trial and they have yet to report their data set in uh, to, uh, to Christy here at uh, uh, Desert Channels Group, uh, please do so. Uh, we'd like to know what's happening with your work and uh, what results you've got. Uh, it doesn't matter if you don't think much has happened uh, because something probably will happen. So go out there, have a look at your trial, uh, bring in the data set. The visits to trial sites confirmed the capsule method of inoculation is effective and the three strains of fungus behave differently from each other and at different locations. All cause decline of trees and probable death. Vic says that collaboration with landholders has put the research five years ahead of where it would otherwise have been. In some locations, dieback appears to be spreading to untreated trees. The team is excited that tree inoculation could possibly be used to initiate a dieback event over a broad area. We're very excited about what we're going to find when we uh, look at the, the next batch of trials.